Dear gathered, we are grateful that we can come together as the people of God to remember, yeah, to remember Larry. We are here because many of you knew Larry and, and you loved him. It is good that we have come together because we need each other. We need each other in consolation. And because we need each other in courage, in wisdom, and faith. Here, yes, here we will face Larry's death. And we will remember, yes, we will remember his life having the opportunity, having the opportunity to let go of any hurts and to show compassion and encouragement to each other and offer, offer support, offer support for his daughters, Nancy and Laura. Time also, hmm, to give thanks for a very special niece, Luann, and her beloved Kevin, which I have yet to meet, but look forward to that. Hmm. Levon, yes, Levon Gaylord Bolt, Leroy Sheffield, Laura Sheffield, and their families, and to the many cousins and friends living both inside, yes, and outside the United States. People who remember and think of him often. Today we have also come together believing that all human life is valuable. Because a human life is sacred in its being born in its living and also in its dying. And so, with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. In the words of St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, we remember our baptism. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might have new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We continue with, Here I am, Lord. That's hymn 574. 574 in the red book.
We pray, oh, God of grace. Oh, God of grace. We remember before you today, Larry. We thank you. We thank you for his life. Now in your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. And in the days ahead, may we live in confidence and hope. Until, by your call, we are gathered into the heavenly home of the company of all our loved ones. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So we'll continue, continue with a video of Larry. So we look forward to seeing that remembrance.
what, what I really appreciated about this remembrance is, is um, the silence. So, and uh, be able to pay attention to what was presented to us in, in that video. Uh, the fleeting, how life goes on, and the transitions. Huh? That was beautifully done. Thank you for making that happen. So we'd like to, to um, uh, share some remembrances. And uh, I, uh, if you would like um, uh, to go to the uh, pulpit area, if you'd like uh, to share your remembrance, you, I'm encouraging you to come forward. If you're a bit shy, uh, I'll come to you. And I got a mic here, so. Because um, I think some of you would like to share, but maybe you're a little nervous at getting up in front of the congregation, so. Okay. So, uh, actually, before we open it up to everybody, I'd like for the family to, uh, to begin the process, so. Uh, well, <laughs> Luann gave me a look, so it's just like she said, oh, that's me. Yeah. So, if you want to go forward, thank you. Lawrence, as he was called in South Dakota, was not only my uncle, but also the one I could turn to like a dad. We talked frequently on the phone. Well, I should say Lawrence talked and I listened, but we knew we could count on each other. He never talked much about growing up and being in the Navy but he, uh, he appreciated his hardworking parents and gave a lot of gruff to his only sister, Dorothy. Being in the Navy and serving his country gave him great pride. Lawrence was a man of many talents from, work, from working with agates, traveling, calling relatives, and collecting vases at garage sales and reselling them to a local florist. He enjoyed teaching, but he really appreciated retirement. He loved coffee time with his dear friend, Bob Shepard and former Augustan alumni. I made it to Casper as many times as I could, and of course we kept busy with all of the garage sales. We tried different eating establishments, going to Posh with B, but we also had wee time. He was frustrated with COVID. He never watched much news because it was too depressing. He always worried about others before himself. Larry could make friends wherever he went, from doctor visits, Meals on Wheels, Habitat for Humanity, and Our Savior's Lutheran Church. He loved to dance, especially to live bands. Artcore was another favorite of his, along with attending old movies at Casper College. Larry also had some very special neighbors. Robert and Marva. I told myself I wasn't going to do this who were always there to lend a hand or a listening ear. They were his support when he needed it. They were my eyes and ears. They were there for Marion and then again for Lawrence. I can never thank them enough for their generosity and love for my uncle. Even after Larry went to Primrose, <clears throat> Robert provided simple meals and always took time to run any errands that needed to be completed. Coming back to South Dakota at least once a year with his traveling partners, Marion and then B, was also important. He loved coming out to the farm, attending family gatherings, catching up with Lyle and Lenora and their families, Lane Reunion and Augustana Reunion. He, never, he loved his vehicles, as you could see on the video, and appreciated the many that he drove. And you know, we just kept on going the whole time. There was not too many times we stayed home. He donated blood, the more often the better, as he was helping those in need. He loved to travel, especially enjoyed his Goldwing motorcycle and traveling with his cousin Kenny. He loved listening to bluegrass and classical music. When it was nap time, the TV would go off and the CD player would play. He had a hard time adjusting to change when it came to cell phones. I don't know how many times he picked them up at garage sales or that he purchased, but he just couldn't figure them out. For his 90th birthday, I had decided in July to bless him with a card shower. I had already, he had already moved to Primrose Retirement Community. I sent notices to businesses, relatives, and friends. He was surprised by the outcome of cards. Thank you so much to all of you who made his birthday very blessed. 
I'm just going to put a little added note in here. He went to the mailbox and he goes, the mailbox was full of birthday cards. He really had a, enjoyed that. I could go on and on how great my uncle was. I asked Jim Owen, who is Lexi Shale's husband, and his granddaughter Madison, who made a trip from North Carolina to see Larry, if they could write down some words in remembrance. He was in no matter the challenge, Jim writes. <clears throat> he loved life and lived it to the fullest a gracious host, and always had words no matter the subject. He was fun, funny, and curious. I always felt at ease around him. A veteran, teacher, father, loved motorcycles, and loved the Lord. Madison writes, Lawrence was a man devoted to his family, both immediate and extended, a lively storyteller and someone who loved deeply. He was very generous and consistently be looked to for lots of advice. I enjoyed the few hours I spent in getting to know him and to learn of his caring heart for people. His last impression on me that day, encouragement to continue pursuing my career interest and a stack of paper loaded with jokes. Last but not least, one of the last things he would say before we ended our conversation on the phone was, love you. My heart hurts. But when I think of all the good that he has done, and will continue to do makes my heart blessed. He has done this by donating his tissue as his last request. Thank you, uh, Lou Ann, for sharing. Thank you. Uh, are there other uh, family members? I'll come to you, so you okay? I think I was four years old when I met my cousin Lawrence. I'm part of the South Dakota people, except I lived in Wisconsin and he came to visit us. And all I remember is he was this tall, dignified person and that never changed. Thank you, dear. These are your loved ones, huh? Thank you, children, for being here, okay? Let's give mom lots of hugs, too, okay, afterwards. Others that would like to, uh, to share? Well, if you change them, oh, good, thank you. My first memory of Larry was I'm sitting in the aisles here and the choir would come down from the choir loft for communion at the rail. And he was the big tall man and walking up to the altar and everything for communion. Friend of my parents. I later um, met him as he sold my parents some mopeds and I kind of <laughs> tore him up at that point and so forth. And later in life, uh, he became a friend through the garage sale circuit and so forth. He always had an upbeat spirit and a wonderful time every time I saw him. To the very end, his smile and his upbeat spirit was lifting to, I think, everybody that met him. I think you hit it with him, that's for sure. Other folks would like to share something. Good, thank you. It's all right. <laughs> a lot of you don't know me, but my name is Dude, and I'm a member of this church. And I came here, moved here from the state of Washington to be with our only two grandchildren eight years ago with my husband since I have lost him. But Larry immediately... I don't say, I won't tell you if it took a few minutes or whatever, immediately came to me and with a big smile on his face and shook my hand and probably gave me a hug and just welcomed me here to this church and its life. He was always a vibrant member of this church and he welcomed anyone that walked through those doors. I love him very much. 
Thank you. Bless you. Larry was always present at the senior dances, and he was so fun to sit with because he was vibrant and would tell stories. And it was just fun to go there. Even if we didn't dance, it was fun to be with Larry. I really appreciated him. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Brenda. Okay. So as in the video, um, there's a picture of Larry eating ice cream. He was the very first one down whenever we had ice cream or malts. And uh, yeah, the big smile. And he always loved to help everybody. He was like, um, can I help serve or can I help pick up? And the same thing, he was very friendly with everybody at Primrose. So I really appreciated getting to know him. Amen. Amen. My name is Jenny Walker. I was Larry's financial advisor. Um, I started working with Larry in 2014 as a new, new financial advisor, and Larry gave me a shot, and I was so grateful to him for that. I always remember when I first got my own office, he went searching for a vacuum cleaner for me because I had no money. And so I wanted whatever I could find and I will never forget him coming back and saying, you owe me $10. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was great and he was so frugal, you know, living through the depression, he was such a frugal individual. And what is interesting is that even though he was so frugal, I rarely called and gave Larry an idea for an investment and he told me no. He always said, have you done your research? I said, yes, I've done my research. He said, does it pay a dividend? I said, yes, it pays a dividend. He said, let's buy some, Jenny. And um, he was always just so warm. And he, I, I would always allocate an hour and a half for appointments for Larry because <laughs> we would talk about 10 minutes worth of investments. And he would tell me, yes, do it. And then for the next hour and 15 minutes we would just sit there and he would mostly share with me about what was on his mind and um, his current analysis of the world conditions and he was just such a joy and I'm so grateful to him. And where could you get a vacuum for 10 bucks? <laughs> just, amen. And if there was a buy, to, he would get it. He'd get it for sure. And it'd be first class stuff too. Amen. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Good. It's glad to, to, to see uh, laughter as well as tears today. Well, I'll try to get this out. Uh, my name's Robert, and it's my wife, Marva. We were his neighbors for 25 years, and uh, it's pretty, pretty hard. I've seen him almost every day, so, so tried to help him out whenever I could. <laughs> he would call, and after he got moved to Primrose, he would check on his house before it got sold, and it was, like anybody else said, it was hard to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> so, but. He had a lot of good things to say, though, right? Yeah. I asked Larry why he wasn't singing with the choir anymore, and he said, after 80 years, that's enough. Young lady, thank you for your courage. Um, I have known him for like my whole entire life, and I've known him from the dances. And he's always sat at our table and told us like so many funny stories. Bless you, dear. Yep. 
Where'd you get that? Oh, heal quickly. Yeah, heal quickly. No. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh okay. Oh, this guy goes back a few years, right? That's correct. I went back a, uh, until we were freshmen. I barely knew him, but as we became sophomores, we moved into a new uh, living quarters in Sioux Falls at Augustana. And uh, he was a have gun will travel friend. He also had the car. So we went to a 3-2 joint to watch have gun will travel because our dorm didn't have a television set. So I just thought that I'd let you all know that we were never out of step when we were doing those things. He also, uh, he also liked to fly with me. He, he enjoyed going back to Sioux Falls one time for in three hours instead of eight hours. And we had a very happy time at, at a 30 or 40th reunion of our class. There's a lot more stories, but very little time, but those two will do. Well, I hope you continue to tell uh, stories like that as, as many times as possible to as many people as possible. All right, bless you, thank you. Okay, Nancy's going to, <laughs> well, you can, there's a mic up there. My name's Nancy Waters, and like uh, Larry's niece told you, he loved music. Well, he loved to listen to music, but he also loved to sing. And I sang for years and years and years with him here at our Savior's Lutheran Choir. And uh, it was just wonderful. And we missed him <clears throat> when he stopped singing. Um, he loved to pick on me and tease me. <clears throat> but I was very blessed to have Larry as a friend. I mean, if you insist to come up front, you're welcome. That's true. I, I did have uh, something to share. You know, Larry was quick to make friends. Um, and at Primrose, he made a friend. And, uh, and when I read uh, this letter, you can just imagine the depth of the friendship in such a short period of time. But he was able to connect with people he was able to connect. So um, I'd like to, to share that. I'm going to give this mic back to <laughs> In memory of Larry Polowski by Darren Tem Turpening. Turpening. Imagine. Wow. Larry was a remarkable fellow and a true friend. He was the type of person that, uh, that you will not remember for what he said or did what, but how he made you feel. Wow. Wow. Through the years, we shared our love of motorcycles. Larry more, went more for traveling and, and myself for camping trips. I also shared traveling to summer school in Laramie with Larry while he was working on our master's degree. Hmm. Larry was uh, the typing teacher for our four children and even my daughter-in-law. This resulted in a lifelong friendship for them. They were very concerned when Larry's health began to fall, fail. Every year, my wife and I looked forward to seeing him at the yearly Meals on Wheels appreciation dinners. At the one held in April of 2021, we were able to have a good visit. This is when we became aware 
aware that he was having difficulty in walking. In June, we were overjoyed when Larry moved to Primrose. For those who do not live in Casper, Primrose is a retirement village that has villas, independent living, boy, it sounds like an advertisement, <laughs> an independent living uh, apartments and assisted living apartment. The assisted living apartments have a nurse on duty 24-7, and they were living in one of the independent living apartments that Larry also moved into one of those apartments. Later, when his physical strength started to fail, he moved into an assisted living apartment. We met each other in the evening meal, and we would have an enjoyable time together, <laughs> to be sure. We would exchange books and share our experiences at Primrose. At this time, we discussed his problems in getting his household. Of course, we talked about how Larry enjoyed going to garage sales. You got a great buy of 10 bucks. Hmm. At this time, we discussed the problems of getting his house sold. Of course, we talked about how Larry enjoyed going to garage sales. It seemed that he had the philosophy that it, if you could not find what he wanted at a garage sale, of course, he would do without. When my wife died, it was just Jerry, Larry, and me. We continued to meet at the dinner time, and I became aware of his health. His health was failing. But I did not realize just how much. Larry had priorities when it came to spending money. Hmm? I assumed that he had no financial problems, <laughs> so I could not understand why he would accept the free basic cable TV, which had no program guide. <laughs> With a cable subscription, he could have the complete offering plus a program guide. Another item was that Primrose had a parking garage. For $65 each month, he could park his Subaru pickup in a heated area. Another priority did not include the delivery of the daily newspaper. This is the Larry my family and his friend all knew and accepted as typical, typical Larry. We became close, became close in our relationship. His passing hit me extremely hard. I truly miss him. When his little Subaru pickup was not in the parking lot, I finally realized that Larry was no longer, no longer a part of my everyday life. Yes, Larry was a remarkable person. And I am proud to say, I am proud to say, he was my true friend. God bless you, Darren, for taking the time to share your thoughts about your dear friend, Larry.
That's where you'll find me, or somewhere over the rainbow. Bluebirds fly, and the dreams that. To dream, why then? No, oh, I can't. I, 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 well, I see trees of green, and I see red roses too. I watch them. see skies of blue and clouds of white, the brightness of day, highlight the dark, and I think to myself, what a wonderful of the rainbow so pretty in the sky are also in the faces of people passing by I hear friends shaking hands saying how do you do they're really saying love you. Well, I hear babies cry and I watch them grow. They'll know much more than we'll know when I think to myself. What a wonderful Wake up where the clouds are far behind. Me, where troubles melt like lemon drops. High above the chimney tops, that's where you'll find me or some. to dream why 
I then? Oh, why can't I? Dear friends, we turn to Scripture, a blessing to do so. In the first reading is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his namesake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading is from the Epistle to the Romans, chapter 8, and includes 31 to 35 and 37 to 39. What then shall we say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his Son but gave him up for all of us. Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Here ends our second reading. A familiar verse Certainly a favorite of Larry's is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. 
Our readings for today from the Holy Scriptures.
Dear honored friends, guests, and dearest church members who knew and appreciated Larry's loveliness. <laughs> so grace to you, God's peace rest upon each and every one of you and carry that peace with you all the days of your life. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. A key, a key sentence of the 23rd Psalm. And Larry wanted this psalm to be read for this occasion. I believe that Larry must have confessed this sentence as he anticipated his death. Most importantly, though, Larry believed. Larry believed these words. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Mm. Larry, as many of you know, he had, he had uh, times of want. Times of want. He had his share of regrets and setbacks. Those who knew him well knew something about those setbacks. Hmm. I have no idea if Larry suffered pain before his death. I don't know. However, one thing I know, and I think many of you know, that Larry lived a life that was vibrant and active. He was a truly, he was truly filled with grit and determination. I imagine he stood in want as he faced the stark reality, the stark reality of his impending death. Yet the words of the 23rd Psalm become upmost, became upmost in his mind and in his heart, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord was Larry's shepherd. And even though he had his share of disappointments, pain, and regrets, through it all, he trusted. He trusted God. The Lord gave Larry the gift of faith to sustain him in the midst of challenges and distress. The Lord brought him through thick and thin, times of laughter and times of tears, times of separation, oh yes, and times of health and sickness. The Lord brought him through. The Lord was gracious. And, you know, he gave Larry the opportunity, the opportunity to influence the lives of hundreds of young people. In addition, his cheer and gracious spirit uplifted many who knew him or had the pleasure of meeting him for the first time. Maybe because, maybe because he relished relationships. The gift of friendships is what sustained him. It led him to offer, <laughs> to offer a smile and extend a greeting to both friend 
and to a stranger. Hmm. As you heard, Larry loved music. He loved to dance, yes. And he shared, shared with me how much he appreciated singing in the choir, a great choir. Hmm. Yet his compassionate heart also led him to also use to also use his gifts to serve the hurts and the needs of others. <laughs> Bringing meals to the homebound, for example. It was, a, it was a passion for Larry. Anything that he was able to meet people. And you know, he, he felt he felt a kinship with the people who appreciated him bringing gifts, a gift of a meal. He appreciated that relationship. It is true that Larry and all of us, at one time or another, at one time or another, and if you haven't been there, it will come, when we have to walk through the shadow, the shadow of death. But we are led, we are led by the Spirit to fear no evil. We know, we know this all too well because Jesus walked that path. Jesus walked that path first. He led death and they let darkness have their way so that we might not allow fear to cast out to cast out the spirit of God's love and faithfulness most importantly the lord as larry's shepherd did what shepherds do the lord the Lord took care of Larry. And Larry allowed Jesus, the divine shepherd, to help transform his life to one that reflected, that reflected both joy and delight. As the divine shepherd restores and leads us, it led Larry to lie down in green pastures of comfort and renewed strength. May we, brothers and sisters gathered today, may we also be led by the Lord and restored by the strength of his love for us so that we're able to walk confidently, to walk confidently all the days of our life to come. This is the kind of shepherd that Larry had. And you know, he still has that kind of that kind of a shepherd, the good shepherd. He is the kind of shepherd who loves Larry. And maybe we need to be reminded that this God loves each and every one of us. And we're grateful that Larry reflected that love and you absorbed it in one way or another. The Spirit of Jesus anointed his head with the oil of forgiveness and the Spirit assured him, assured him of God's love and faithfulness and grace. It was the still waters of Larry's baptism that sustained him, sustained him all the days of his life up to the last breath that he breathed. Larry's cup, cup ran over. It was filled to the brim with the Lord and the life of the shepherd. Jesus died Jesus died, yet he lives. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. 
and through the power through the power of the spirit there is no want through the power of the divine spirit there is comfort and strength for each and every one of us in life but also in death for now for now we mourn but not as those who have no hope the end of larry's life was the beginning was the beginning of his life in god's eternal realm he is with jesus he is with jesus his shepherd and all his loved ones who have passed before him and with all the other saints and angels Larry will dwell in the house of the Lord forever for the Lord has prepared a place for him and he has a place for each and every one of us now may the God of peace who brought Jesus back from the dead to be the good shepherd and may his spirit equip us with everything good that we may continue we may continue to do God's will and to serve him in the places to serve him in the places where we stand and sit and live amen We pray. And you may join me as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed in heaven, hallowed is thy name, thy kingdom come, and thy name is served. And lead us not. And give us our, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen receive this blessing may the rising of the sun bring you new hope every day may the moon gently restore you by night May the rain wash away your tears. And all the days of your life, may you walk gently through this land. Amen. And we'll, we, we'll continue prayers. We have a hymn. Okay. Abide with me. Thank you for reminding me that.
As we pray, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and please respond, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have knit us together as your people. Grant to us, who are still on our life's journey, your guiding and giving spirit. May our days ahead lead us to live in the awareness of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. As we gather to remember the life of Larry Pawlowski, we pray that you give us a strong measure of your love and assurance especially for his daughters, Nancy and Laura, his special niece, Luann Thompson, and other loved ones, LaVon Bolt, Leroy Sheffield, and Lauren Sheffield, and many other cousins and extended family and friends come alongside us, gracious Holy Spirit, and remind us that you are the source of divine comfort and strength. Lord, in your mercy, Merciful Father, Lord of all life, we honor you that we are made in the image, your image, and have the potential to reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of Larry and for the faithful and unconditional love you bestowed upon him. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Father, our Maker and Redeemer, grant us the sure benefits of your saving passion that in the last day, when you gather up all things, we may be united with all our loved ones as we enjoy the fullness of your everlasting promises. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of all, we praise you for all our loved ones and friends who have entered their rest and reached the promised land where you are seen face to face Thank you for the memory of those who are now within your full embrace. And by every memory, turn our hearts from things seen to things unseen and lead us till we come to the eternal rest that you have prepared for all your created people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Now may the love of God embrace us, the power of the Spirit strengthen us, lead us, and strengthen us for the living out the days in faithful service to those who need to know compassion and love. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. And now we'd like to ask the military folks to come forward from American Legion Post Number Two in Casper, Wyoming. So we ask that the military folks come forward now. We, the members of the United States Navy and the Corona County United Veterans Council, are here assembled to pay a lasting tribute of respect to our departed comrade. When the call of our country was heard, our comrade Larry answered, Self was forgotten in the cause of the greater good. As a brave man, he marched away with the abiding faith in his God, his country, and his flag. The red of our country's flag was made redder by his heroism, the white more stainlessly pure by the motives which impelled him. And in the starry field of our nation's banner, the blue has been glorified 
by the service he has given for American ideals. Chaplain. Let us pray. O God, Father of us all, we here extend these final earthly tributes to our beloved comrade Larry. Accept our prayers in behalf of the servant departed. Prayers of a grateful nation for our departed comrade who answered the blare of the bugles, the ruffle of the drums, and whose glory will never fade. Welcome him to thy house to rest in peace. Look with mercy upon the loved ones bereaved by his passing. Comfort and console them through thine own tenderness. These things we ask humbly in thy name. Amen. Firing detail. At this time, I would like to caution you, there will be three rifle volleys. And I would like to request that any individual who has ever worn the uniform of the Armed Forces of the United States of America to please stand and help us honor our departed comrade while we do the firing detail and taps. And it is permissible to render the hand salute even though you are not in uniform. Hand salute. Two, please be seated. <clears throat> this banner of love and devotion now being folded is a living memorial of the courageous thoughts of our comrade, the one you came here to honor this day. The blue field represents the sky that overlooks our land and denotes the watchfulness of God the Eternal. The red stripes tell us of blood, sweat, and tears that have been offered and conquered 
by our comrades' devotion to the responsible freedom of this country. This is Larry's flag. This is our spiritual heritage. Receive it with the tears of our minds and the faith of our hearts. Post. We now entrust to your infinite care, O oh God, Larry Pulowski, fondly known to most of us as Larry, turn us toward us and listen to our hearts. We trust that you have opened the gates of heaven to your beloved Larry and help us who remain to comfort one another in the, with assurances of faith until we all meet the one who formed us and who loves us everlastingly. We ask this in your beloved name. Amen. Receive now the final blessing. May the rising of the sun bring you new hope every day. May the moon gently restore you by night. May the rain wash away your tears. And the breeze blow new joy into your being all the days of your life. May you walk gently through this land and know its peace. Amen. Dear friends, as we leave, we invite friends and guests uh, to join us in the basement for uh, a time of sharing, a time to share Larry's stories, and just the joy fellowship of one another. So I ask now you to rise and to go in peace, knowing that God's peace and love will remain with you always.